Good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. This is John Paul Rye, and I am coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Today, I'd like to talk about Kelly Marie Tran's article in the New York Times. Before I get into this, I want to throw this out there that my wife and my kids are Japanese, so I'm going to say a few words about being Asian, and if anybody thinks I'm a racist, try again, because I'm married to Japanese and I have Japanese kids, so... It would be pretty weird if I was racist against someone I married and uh, had kids with. And a few of the things I want to focus on here are the words and terms that Kelly Marie Tran uses, and you guys can help me out with that because I've been in Japan 13 years, so I'm not 100% in touch with, you know, what's being used these days in America for referring to people of certain races and colors and everything. Also, I want to get into things that Kelly Marie Tran said that hinted towards her feeling awkward growing up the way she did in America. First, let's look at her heritage. Born January 17, 1989, age 29, in San Diego, California, United States. Nationality, American. You know, that says that there. And I want to raise this question that she said she was the first Asian woman on the cover of Vanity Fair. But I mean... It's a slippery slope because why isn't she an American on the cover of Vanity Fair? I mean, I guess you could say you're both. I guess you could say you're Asian American on the cover of Vanity Fair. But she's not Asian in the sense that she grew up in Asia. She moved here when she was already 20 or 18 and she's already fully used to that culture and she came here for a totally new experience. She's American. She grew up in California and in my mind that makes her an American. So if there was um, a movie star from China or Korea that was on Vanity Fair, I would think that's the first Asian on the cover of Vanity Fair. They're Asian. They grew up there. They know the culture. Kelly Marie Tran is only Asian by blood. Make no mistake, she is an American. And I don't think that's something you can really debate. That's just a fact. I'm not going to get into the article on the whole about the context of her talking about how she blames Hollywood and the fan base or whatnot. That you could check out Geeks and Gamers and John Talks, and there are a lot of great videos on that already. I want to talk about her and her claim that she's Asian and it was awkward for her living in America. So let me take this first part. And those words awaken something deep inside me, a feeling I thought I had grown out of. The same feeling I had. When at nine, I stopped speaking Vietnamese altogether because I was tired of hearing other kids mock me. So, alright, I know what it's like to be a little bit shy of speaking a second language, and I have kids who go to school who are going to be shy of speaking English. That doesn't mean you stop speaking it completely. Speaking a second language is a great thing, and that's something you should just be proud of. And if you get made fun of a little bit, you get made fun of a little bit. So I'm going to have to say that, you know, it was kind of possibly bad advice or possibly even bad parenting that kind of made her feel shy or embarrassed because I'm going to tell my kids, you got to speak English, you got to speak two languages, you know, unless someone is like has death threats out and, you know, out to kill you, just speak English and, uh, you know, be cool. I'm just saying, you know, all right, if it's going to stop you from getting girls and stuff, do what you got to do to fit in, but you have to speak it. You don't give it up. Or at 17, when at dinner with my white boyfriend and his family, I ordered a meal in perfect English to the surprise of the waitress who exclaimed, Wow, it's so cute that you have an exchange student. All right, first of all, this example that she's choosing to take in the New York Times has to be one of the most extreme examples I've ever heard in my life. Do you listening right now know a waitress who's like such a bubblehead that they're going to see an Asian girl with a family and think it's an exchange student in California? Wow, I don't think in California. I think she just takes the media and uses the worst possible example to try to make her point. And let me remind you, you're not hearing this from a dude who's living in America and just fitting in normally and trying to figure out what it's like. I live in Japan, and on a daily basis, I deal with being very different. I also work in the countryside. The only foreign person I see the entire workday is usually me. 
Every time I walk into a convenience store or a restaurant or go to work, I know exactly what it's like. You know, people say things all the time about me being a white guy here. And it's just, you, you gotta just laugh it off, you know? If you go through life just causing friction and just being so insulted and taking every little thing to heart, you're not gonna have a good time. And I'm gonna think it's kind of your fault for the way you feel about your life. I mean, I hear every day, oh, you're not Japanese, you don't understand. And people say that, and they're not being mean, they're not trying to, like, break my heart. They're just, they're just saying it, like, you know, well, yeah, you don't drink hot tea on a hot summer day, you're not Japanese, you're damn right, I don't drink hot tea on a hot summer day. And we just laugh it off, you know? Let me get into the second paragraph I took out from the article. I want to live in a world where children of color don't spend their entire adolescence wishing to be white. I want to live in a world where women are not subjected to the scrutiny for their appearance or their actions or their general existence. And from my point of view, it seems like we're actually moving away from that world. Um, again, I'm not in America, so I don't see everything that's going on. But when I'm looking from the outside, it looks like there are a lot more women in movies, a lot more women in business. I see women doing the same careers as men, so... I mean, you guys can help me out in the comments, but it seems like we are moving towards a more equal world. Will it be perfectly equal? No, of course not. And yeah, that's life. Also, one more thing. It seems to me that in America you can use the word white, white male, just very easily and not get any backlash for it. So why couldn't she just say something like their entire adolescence wishing to be a different person or somebody different or something like that? I want to live in a world where people of all races, religions, socioeconomic classes, sexual orientations, gender identities, and abilities are seen as what they always have been. Human beings. Alright, now, yeah, obviously this is a very nice thing to say. I have nothing to say bad about her idea, but it's a very theoretical, unrealistic concept that seems kind of fakish to put out in the New York Times. I mean, she knows thousands and thousands of people are going to be reading it, so she has to put out something like that, and I just don't find that real from the heart. I think every human being judges to a certain extent. I mean, yeah, there's, there's different levels of how we judge each other, but, you know, come on, everybody looks at somebody else and makes some kind of judgment calls what type of person they are, and that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you can judge people by their abilities. So if I see somebody's like really good at playing guitar and they're, you know, really good at writing, I say, hey, that's a creative person. They worked, you know, their whole life on this. If I see a guy who kind of comes to my house, he's got, you know, his hair's not combed and, you know, he kind of smells like he hasn't done his laundry, I can make an assumption about the way the guy lives his life and I probably won't be totally wrong. As far as gender identities, well, I can't blame somebody for what's not their fault. I mean, I have friends of you know, differing gender identities and sexual orientation. It's not about whether they actually are born with that or not. It's how they handle it. If they flaunt it and, you know, they, they make it awkward and they kind of say that they're being treated different when maybe they're not to stand out. You could, you know, judge them as a person and their personality based on that fact. You know, I have a few friends who have different orientations, but they're just totally cool. They don't mention it. It doesn't come into conversation. So... Yeah, you can't judge people for their biological decision that wasn't made by them, but you can judge them by their attitude and their ability to use it in social situations. Now, right here is where I'm a little bit confused, so you guys could help me on this. This is a touchy one, and, you know, in a way I hate making these videos that are just kind of controversial, but in a way I think they're kind of important. You might know me as Kelly. I am the first woman of color to have a leading role. Wait. Woman of color? I thought, and not I thought, but when I was growing up in the United States, you know, when I was in elementary school and when I was in college and just pretty much my whole existence up until I was around 30 years old living in the United States, person of color meant somebody who's black. And when you think of a person of color, yeah, I think of a black guy. I got black friends too. And did person of color become now Asian and Muslim and... Indian, I, I guess. Either I'm just out of touch, but I thought person of color was specifically reserved for black people. You guys help me out on that one. I am the first Asian woman to appear on the cover of Vanity Fair. Like I said before, 
I'm gonna argue that she's American, and I would have to say she could at least say she's the first Asian American. She can't say she's the first pure Asian, because she's not. She was born in America. And if you're gonna call yourself Asian, and just Asian, what's the point of being born in America? I, sorry, I'm confused, you guys help me out, but that's my take on it. My real name is Loan, and I am just getting started. Okay, so I can't really bash on her for not using her real name for movies. Everybody has a pen name or an actor name or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. As far as her blaming Hollywood and kind of the fandom a little bit, she gets into how she was kind of brainwashed and they made her feel the way she did. I have to chalk that up to personal weakness. That's my opinion. Okay, again, I gotta remind you guys, I'm living in a society of a monoculture where they do things all the same, and a lot of people here you could say are quote-unquote brainwashed. They don't think about things, they keep going through their life and just doing things the way other people do them, but there are plenty of them who recognize this and tell me, yeah, we do this, you know, it's part of the culture, I'm doing it to fit in, because if I didn't do it, then I wouldn't fit in so well, and it would just make things rougher than me, so for now, I just want to have smooth sailing and do it, so... You know, for her to just ad blatantly admit she was brainwashed, that's kind of like saying to me, well, I wasn't thinking for myself. And there's no excuse for not thinking for yourself. I mean, that just isn't. I'm going to end this here. My two bottom lines to take away are this. You think about it for yourself if you think she's Asian or if she's American Asian or just plain American. And you let me know about the person of color thing because I thought that was reserved for black people. And yeah. If you like this content, community is growing little by little, please consider subscribing. And I would love to hear your thoughts, as I've said like a hundred times in this video. Apologies for that, and I will shut up. See you next time. <laughs>